What's up guys and welcome back to another eBay miniature rescue. Today we're going to be tackling a pretty sweet space wolf. So first off, I just want to thank Jason M for donating this model. It's really awesome that you sent it in, man. I really appreciate it, and I think we're going to have some fun. If you would like to support this channel much like Jason did, then I have a bunch of information in the description below. So I thought that this week I would take a little bit of a different approach in painting this particular model. Now I threw it in the Sonic Cleaner and I got most of the paint off, but I left some of the primer on there, which was, you know, after being in the Sonic Cleaner, kind of messed up. And it gave a really cool texture to the model. So I thought, well, why not paint over that and use that texture to kind of create a three-dimensional look? A lot of people might be happy to know that I went out and got some Stino Res primer. And I actually bought a few different colors to do you know, a fair amount of things just to see which I like better. Now, I've been told that the black primer is the best, and that's what we're going to start with. But then we're going to come in with some of this kind of gray blue and do kind of a top down spray in the same way that you would do a zenithal highlight. And that's really going to give us the base coat for our Space Wolf armor. So, this is really the first time that I've used Stylo Res primer but I can already tell that it is superior to the Vallejo primer I've been using. It seems to shoot a lot nicer out of the airbrush and the finish is a lot smoother and I'm really enjoying that. So I'm hoping, you know, I can use this a lot more and kind of do some more experimenting. Then using rust gray through the airbrush again, I'm just gonna do kind of a quick pass and make a lot of these highlights from the top down just a little bit brighter. Now, Rust Gray isn't a whole lot brighter than that Stano Res Blue Gray Primer, but it's going to just give a little bit of a jump in value into some of those highlight areas and kind of make more of a roadmap for future highlighting. Using Chaos Black, Rust Gray, and a little bit of Vallejo White, I'm going to put these onto a wet palette to pull from. I'm going to start with a mix of that Rust Gray and Chaos Black, and I'm going to start to lay down some shadows and then stipple on some texture onto those kind of three-dimensional areas and start to create some more battle damage on this armor. Now, what I really wanted to do is accentuate a lot of, you know, the texture that was already there. And then I'm going to put some into some of the other flatter areas that don't necessarily have some. And we're going to try and create a 3D textured effect using, you know, lights and darks. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to stipple on and kind of line different areas of the armor. And this is kind of up to you, however you want to do this. We're going to start with that mix of Chaos Black and Rust Gray. And that's just going to give us our main texture. And then we're going to come back in with a mix of Rust Gray and some of that white and go beneath all of that in kind of the same motion. We're going to stipple that on and try and create enough random variety that it looks a little more realistic than it would otherwise. Now, normally this kind of gives kind of a cartoony look, which I don't mind personally. I like that, you know, in, in a model. And it's kind of fun to just kind of freehand around and make these different textures. But I'm also trying to use what's left over from that kind of busted up primer. And we're going to have some of that 3D texture within our fake texture, making it look hopefully a little bit nicer. I'm also going to take some of this white and rust gray mix, and I'm going to edge highlight all of the armor. I'm also going to kind of try and do some non-metallic types of looks. You know, this is something I've been experimenting with more and more, and I'm trying to put it in the videos to show, I guess, my journey with it, you know, experimenting, failing, trying again. And I feel like in this particular area, you know, on his collar, it turned out okay, but where I'm particularly happy with it was on the shoulder pads. All in all, I'm 
really just trying to experiment and try new things and see how far I can take that. I also wanted to use this mix to kind of give highlights to a lot of the armor panels, um, randomly stippling around and making it fairly rough just to kind of show that the armor is a little bit beaten up and light is, you know, theoretically bouncing around in a lot of different ways off of those pieces of armor. Coming in with Aberlin Sunset, I'm going to fill in the shoulder pad, which also has a really cool 3D printed Space Wolf icon on it that Jason got from Shapeways. I should also mention that this intercessor, which is normally just a Primaris intercessor, was converted using parts from a Space Wolf tactical sprue. So the belt and the head are, you know, Space Wolf parts. And then obviously this icon was printed, but it really looks nicely put together. It's really cool. Now coming in with some Mephist in Red, I'm going to take care of the other shoulder pad. Using Scale 75's Arbuckles Brown, which is fast becoming one of my favorite base coat browns, I'm going to come in and take care of the leather pouches, the belt, and all of the tubing between the armor panels. So the reason I decided to use this brown as a base coat instead of going black is that it kind of gives a little bit more of an earthy look, you know, kind of more natural than just black tubing. And I really like that look with this kind of bluish armor. I'm also going to use this brown on the chest piece. That way we have a nice base coat to work off of for any kind of gold. And Technically, I'm going to attempt some non-metallic gold on this, but, you know, we'll get to that a little bit later. You'll, you'll see what happens. Vallejo Metal Colors Dark Aluminum to fill in any of the silver metallic parts. Now, specifically on the gun, when I was doing all of the priming, I ended up getting this kind of really nice gradient, like completely on accident. And I really like the way that this looked for the gun. Now, I know it's a little bit close in color. You know, I mean, it's obviously the same color as the armor. But thinking about that, you know, filling in these silver details and eventually going to come back and edge highlight all of that, I think it's going to give a really cool different kind of look to this gun than, you know, just a red casing. The point being that sometimes, you know, you get these happy little accidents, but, you know, sometimes you just got to choose to roll with them and see what happens. Now I'm going to come in with Scale 75's basic flesh and fill in the face. So I got this Scale 75 skin tone pack for Christmas. And I've been trying to use it quite a bit just because, you know, it is kind of a pre-done skin recipe, if you will. And I've really been enjoying that. Um, I've been using the Citadel skin tones for so long that, I don't know, it just seems kind of plain. So coming in with this kind of different skin tone and, you know, trying to make faces a little bit nicer and, and work on that technique... The Scale 75 has actually been really nice. So now that all of our base coats are pretty much taken care of, I'm going to take all of those paints and lay them out on the wet palette. And then I'm going to choose a color that is an appropriate highlight and put those next to that color on the wet palette to grab from. Now we're going to start with this lighter brown and I'm going to do some glazing on any of the yellow parts, pretty much just this shoulder pad for now and then start to do a little bit more battle damage in the same way that we did on the regular armor panels. So essentially, I'm going to stipple this on and kind of lay it randomly onto that armor panel, and then I'm going to come back in with a little bit of white and mix that into our yellow and go underneath all of those in, again, the same kind of pattern, stippling pattern, 
And that's just going to give us a nice highlight and create that three-dimensional look. Now, one thing that I find really rewarding and I guess relaxing is a, is a good way to put it is finding small areas on each one of the models that you paint and just kind of letting go. Taking these blank canvas areas and using them as a blank canvas and just playing around with your paints and kind of seeing what you can do. So taking these different kinds of, you know, 3D battle damage effects and glazing in these different colors, you know, just a little bit freeing and feels nice to do and it's something you can easily get lost in and just kind of play around with so the next time that you run into something like that just a big blank area just play around for a little bit and see what happens you just never know what will come out of that you know even if it looks bad it's like you can just repaint it it's just paint but it's a really cool thing to to take the opportunity when it comes up and just experiment and try new things. And of course, speaking of experimentation, I tried to do some non-metallic gold on this chest piece. And again, it kind of worked to varying degrees. I think that, you know, it's something I'm still trying to work on and get better at. So I'm just going to keep pushing forward and see how far it takes me. Now, I went pretty far with this one. I got all the way through to, you know, doing all of the, the major highlights. And looking at it, it kind of comes across as gold, but, you know, eventually I'm just going to come back in and cover it with a real metallic gold. And like I said earlier, it's just paint. You can paint over it or take it off all the way. So there's no harm in experimenting and, you know, might not have worked out this time, but I'm certainly going to try again. So I came into the face and used a little bit of Reichland Flesh Shade just to kind of give that a little bit more depth. I also put that on the hair because it's kind of orangey red anyways and we're going to highlight that. And then I'm going to come in with this Vallejo Metal Color Gold and fill in that Aquila. Now I don't normally reach for this gold because it's a little bit desaturated. It's not as shiny as a lot of other golds out there. It does go on really well. But I thought it was appropriate for this particular model because of those reasons. All right, so it's time to start highlighting up the face. Now that that shade is dried, I'm gonna reach for some of this basic skin tone, and we're just gonna work up brighter and brighter skin tones and kind of tighten up those highlights on any of the raised areas. So the first thing I'm gonna do with this basic skin tone is go over all of the face and make sure that all of that shade is still showing in those recesses. Then I'm gonna grab the next step up, just a little bit lighter version of that skin tone, and I'm gonna take care of all of the main areas of the face. So you're talking about the brow and the nose and the upper lip. What I particularly like about this Scale 75 flesh tone set is that because these colors were chosen and put together, when you lightly layer over each section, it blends really nicely, like a lot nicer than a lot of Citadel colors generally do. And I don't know if that's because of the gel medium or whatever that is, but it seems to work really well, or at least for my particular way of painting. So now I'm going to take some of this basic skin tone, mix it in with just a little bit of red, a little bit of kind of a yellow and blue mix to get some green in there. And I'm going to make kind of a shadow color and I'm going to try and push some of these shadows in, especially that kind of ridged area on his forehead, that brow line, to really make him look angry. <laughs> so it seems to work out pretty well. Um, it mixes nicely with the other skin tones and kind of tightens up our highlights just a little bit. I'm also gonna use this mix to darken down the eye sockets so we can come in with some brighter colors and really accentuate those eyes. I'm gonna use some of that Vallejo white that's on my palette, mix it in with my lighter skin tone and take care of the teeth. Then we're gonna go over those eye sockets again and kind of tighten this up and really just try and hit kind of that center section to make those eyes stand out like they're just glowing super bright white. 
I decided that I wanted to push that contrast even further, so I brought in a little bit of that Chaos Black and Rust Gray. And I thought bringing in a little bit of that Rust Gray would kind of bring that color into the face a little bit more. It would match, you know, with the whole Space Wolf theme. And then come back in with that white and, again, dot that eye. And we really get this nice kind of, like, glowing electric look out of it. And I thought that was pretty cool. To come in and highlight that hair just a little bit to kind of bring a little more attention to that face, I'm using a little bit more of a saturated orange and just kind of going in that central main section. Then we're going to take care of the base. So I cut them off the old one because there was a slot. So I used a new base, put some white and blue together and make a nice ice. Then I used a ghrelin earth, let that dry, dry brush that with some kind of snowy colors, then put some glue on it, put some snow on it, and then called it a day. I thought it turned out pretty good. So the last thing I really want to do is put some kind of final touches onto this armor. I want to accentuate the shadows a little bit more and we're going to end up coming back in with, you know, a specific kind of wash to really push that even further. But I'm going to take some of this rust gray and black and start to chip up all of the edge highlighting to just give it a little bit more of that battle-worn look. In order to tie this model in with that really kind of frostbitten base, I'm going to come in with some of this Vallejo pigment and really liberally coat the legs. Now this kind of gives it that frozen look, even though it's kind of a deserty pigment more than anything, but it mixes with that agrel and earth and snow kind of look. Then we're going to come in with an oil wash and I'm going to put this into the recesses and then liberally coat a majority of the armor. And what this is really going to do is accentuate any of the textures that we have going on on this model, bring out that damaged, you know, torn up look, and it's going to bring a lot more contrast into all of the pieces. So this was a pretty fun project overall. I've never actually painted a Space Wolf before, and it was a lot of fun to just kind of experiment and try new things and even though it's not the perfect model you know i left mold lines and pieces here and there and obviously all the texture you know it was kind of fun to try and use some of those things to our advantage which i guess goes to show that you can kind of do whatever you want and still end up with a pretty cool model Thank you once again for joining me on another eBay Miniature Rescues. Please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing as it really helps out the channel. If you are considering donating a model just like Jason M did for this video, please check the description box below this video as it has some instructions on how to do that if you want to, and also how I do commissions. Um, in the last few weeks, I've been kind of inundated in not a bad way, but you know, a lot of emails have come in, different Facebook messages and, you know, Instagram and all over the place emails. And if I haven't gotten back to you, I apologize. It's just, it's been a lot, like more than normal in the last couple weeks. So I'm trying to keep up with that stuff. If you think that I may have missed your email, please don't hesitate to email me again. I'm really trying to get to everyone and I want to make sure that I give everyone, you know, a fair shake. Once again, I'm Casey and I will see you in the next video. So what did you guys think about the uh, the basing this time? Normally I don't show it in my videos. Um, you know, it's been requested quite a bit more lately, especially uh, to show that. And I tried to do it as fast as possible so it wouldn't, you know, interfere with the video too much. 
Um, you know, I'm still working on the Blight Kings. Uh, I've got, I realize there's a little bit more work than I thought there was. So most of these models, like they've been primed, they've got a Zenithal. Um, they were started with some contrast paints, which really isn't the issue. But the back end is missing that chain mail. So I think what I'm going to do is a bunch of green stuff work. So hopefully that'll be pretty cool. I also want to thank everyone for checking out that eBay auction from the Karn the other week. Um, as of right now recording, it still has a few days left. But it's up to, I think, $78, and that's incredible. So thank you very much for the support. I've got a few cool projects coming up. Uh, we're going to put some more stuff on eBay. We're also going to be doing some more collaborations pretty soon, so that's pretty interesting. And there's a pretty super secret project in the works that I'm only just going to tease lightly right now. It's a podcast. But we'll get to that. Thanks for sticking around, guys. I will see you next time.